Welcome back. We are here from Genre Blast again with another filmmaker. I am here with Jamin Mears. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, doing great, Josh. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Uh, so you are the director behind the music video, the, the sci-fi music video. Let me mm -hmm. just put that genre out there. Uh, static. It's it's really it's not every day I feel like I get to like talk to someone about a short film that is like primarily like a music video. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, what came first, the concept for the video or the music? Well, the music came first. Um, so the, the artist, Farewell Fortune, um, approached me maybe about a year ago and said, hey, I want to do something a little different with our music video. I want to do some, no performance. I just want to tell a story. Um, and I wanted to be sci-fi, and I wanted to be about the relationship between a father and daughter. So the music came first. It's part of an album. Um, the album's called Chaos Serum. Um, and, um, you know, then we kind of built the, the video concept from there. So this might, this might be me showing my age, but I grew up in the age when MTV still played videos yeah. and, uh, VH one, that was kind of part of my morning routine, waking up. And this film, this film feels like a throwback to that era mm -hmm. where music videos aren't just about the artist performing, but it's like trying to tell like this, like conceptual narrative within the span of four to five minutes and could you kind of talk about some of the as a director kind of the the influences that you had kind of coming into this project oh yeah so um you know, sci you know obviously huge sci-fi influences um star wars obviously was a big one much bigger budget than we had to work <laughs> with um but that was obviously a huge huge influ influence uh, blade runner just kind of like we kind of wanted to lean into like this dystopian future type feel so um watched a lot of um watched a lot of that actually even um uh some influences from alien um and um trying to think of what other films we kind of tapped and tried to tap into to give us inspiration but, but probably those three would be the um the, the main ones yeah so we've kind of teased the emphasis on this being a, a music video, but what is the actual story that the video is telling? So it is the it's it's it follows the story of a girl, and in, in the kind of in the beginning of the video, you realize that this girl she's uh, there's she's it keeps flashing back to her past. It follows basically two timelines: the present timeline and this past timeline. And you realize as she's working on something that um, she's finishing um, her father's life work which is a time travel device. And the, 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 the real story is she, she's trying to finish her father's life work so she can attempt to go back and save him. You'll see why as you watch the film, but it really cuts back and forth between those two time, those two time periods. So I got to ask, like, because the, like I said, this is the first time I've ever like had a chance to like sit down and like talk to a director of a music video because it's, I don't feel like this is like a, common practice mm -hmm. in, in filmmaking anymore. Um, can you kind of talk about the the relationship of kind of bringing the concept to life with the artist and kind of like, you know, was this a collaborative effort? Did they have ideas that you say like, I have ideas too, and then kind of like hash it out or like, can you kind of talk about the relationship with the artist? Sure. Yeah. So um, when it started, um, as I mentioned, he just, he came to me and said, Hey, I want to do sci-fi. And I want to do it. I want it to be about the relationship between a father and a daughter. So at that point, I took that back, and it was a little bit of a collaboration, kick back and forth, a few ideas. Well, what about this? What if we did this? And I thought, okay, sci-fi time travel could be cool. I thought, um, you know, uh, I, I actually have three daughters, so I thought, man, I really like the the concept and the idea of this relationship between a father and a daughter. And what if we, what if we did it from the daughter's perspective? Um, and then it was just a matter of like, what do we have to work with? Two of my daughters are actresses. They both look very similar. And I thought, oh, time travel. They both look similar. Maybe we make one the older version and one the younger version. So some of that was just out of necessity. This is what we have. So let's see what the best story we can tell with this is. Um, and, and then from there, um, it, we, uh, I basically crafted the story and sent him like, here's just the narrative. We kicked that, that back and forth for a little while. He told me what he liked. He told me what he didn't. Um, at that point, we storyboarded the entire thing, 100 shots. Um, so everything got storyboarded and the final cut is, is probably like 99% of what we storyboarded, like exactly. There may be one or two shots that we, that we, uh, modified from what we had originally planned, but yeah. 
Um, and that was it. Then we shot it and cut it together. Wow. Uh, so in terms of like sci-fi and like this, this is a dystopian story that you're telling. Uh, this is kind of like the linchpin of the entire setting, the backdrop of the video. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, as a cinephile that I, I feel like that's such a, it's such a dime a dozen yeah. uh, kind of concept and like setting to do for, you know, we have cyberpunk that goes around it. You have like other like sci-fi, uh, you have properties like the Hunger Games and stuff like that. What, how did you guys uh, set out to make Static a distinct in such a overcrowded landscape? That's a good question. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we, we, where we really started from was a point of this is what we have and what's the best thing that we can make. So, so um, that, that was, you know, with that as a starting point, then we just kind of thought, okay, what parts of these tropes should we lean into and what parts of these tropes should we deviate from in, in the most creative ways that we, the most creative ways that we can. So we definitely did, um, we definitely did approach it kind of more from, from that aspect of what can, you know, what would be the things to what would be the things to bring over that make it feel sci-fi? But then, where do we where do we branch off? Um, so, um, you know, I, I guess that's probably the best answer I have for that. So, sure. Yeah. So this being uh, you you mentioned before we started this is Static is kind of the first project to do the festival run for you. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of what why why now? Um. So. Uh, that that's another interesting question. I guess as we were as we were uh, getting through our assembly edit, and as we were starting to cut, kind of cut the thing together, I, I do quite a few music videos, and this one just kind of felt special. And I mentioned to the I mentioned to Farewell Fortune, the artist, um, you know, you may want to consider a festival run for this, just because it really felt more like a short film than it did like. Uh, you know, a lot of, like you mentioned before, a lot of music videos, which are just rely heavily on performance. Um, and since this had no performance in it, um, that's what made it really kind of feel like, wow, you know, I think this video could be a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit more like a film and, and may do well. So, I mean, like I said, it, it really stood out here with genre blast because it's, it's not every day that you mm -hmm. kind of get to come across and discuss a, a music video. And in terms of like, you know, you being a father, what sets our publication apart from a, a lot of other publications and, and channels is that we discuss, you know, the mental health side of things. Yeah. And so, you know, being a father and telling a story that is very heavily revolving around fatherhood and, you know, kind of generational mistakes or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of trying to right wrongs of the, the previous generations, how much of this, uh, you know, being autobiographical, did you bring in or uh, did you lend to the to the storytelling aspect of the, the music video? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so for me, not too much autobiographical, but I looked at it from an angle of like, we all have these things in our lives that we're like, man, um, what would I love to change? If I could go back and change this one thing, right? And I think a lot of sci-fi, especially sci-fi that has to do with time travel, like starts with that as a premise. If I could change, right? And, and then, you know, you realize that, usually that comes with some other sort of sacrifice because we are the people we are because of all the things that we experienced. So that's what I think is fun about time travel is you, is you get to um, play around with that and see like, well, what, you know, if I did go back and change or if this character did go back and change something in the past, how would that affect who they are now? Um, and, and, and we did get into that a little bit with this film. Um, you know, I don't want to say too much about it because we are there. This is the first, uh, this was going to be the first of a trilogy. So there'll be, there'll be two more videos in this series where we kind of tap into that a little bit more. But, um, you know, that really is, uh, story wise, what we try to tap into is more the feeling of that, that we all have at some point of, of, you know, if I could change something, what would it be and how would that affect me and that kind of stuff? That's awesome to hear. I, love kind of like the inkling of like just that tease of like there's more story because i felt like when i got done watching this it, it kind of felt like there's more to be told here and mm -hmm. kind of more landscape to explore especially when you're doing something like as 
big and massive as the sci-fi genre. The sci-fi genre feels like it's really hard to contain just to like a singular story. Right. Um, and so like, I guess like with that one, with future, if you can like tease just a little bit, like are we going to see something that is more traditional music video, like static, or will there be kind of a little bit more of like a narrative feel and kind of like a, a mixture between the two? Well, it's, it'll definitely be narrative. It'll probably, uh, follow, um, st stylistically similarly, similarly to static where it's there, there'll be no performance. It'll be completely narrative. There probably, it probably won't have dialogue. It'll probably be like static in the, in the, uh, in the sense that it's it, the backdrop of the film is the music. Um, but, but yeah. Um, and it'll explore where, where things wind up, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but where things wind up at the end of static. So, yeah. Is it, was it challenging to create something to, I, I'm, this is not my, this is not my expertise whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it, is it more challenging to set a, a film around a, like a, a single for one, or like even like the length, like a certain length of time saying like, this is our intro, this is our cutoff point mm -hmm. or some of the challenges in that regard. What makes it, what makes it, I think what makes doing this with a music video and doing this with music um, easier, I think, is that um, there's there's these defined parts to a song, right? So that that was the very first thing we did is uh, is break apart the song and say, okay, here's the intro. This intro is 12 seconds. Okay, here's the verse one. Verse one is 15 seconds. Then we go into the pre-chorus. Then we go into the chorus. We go into verse two, so on and so forth. And to be able to like break the song into sections as you're creating the narrative, then it gives you like these really defined, especially when we're jumping back and forth between time A and time B. Sure. Um, so we it gave us really defined points where we could say, okay, well, this is going to be time, time period A, here's going to be time period B, and here's how we jump back and forth in a way where the music can support it emotionally. Um, so that was like, it did make it a lot easier in, in that sense especially without having dialogue when we don't have somebody we want when we don't have somebody like saying lines and we like everything is you know i know the like you always want to try with your stories to show more than tell but that's like in a music video where there's no dialogue that's all you can do is show so um it it, it, give, it does add additional challenge there but i think because of the structure of um a song uh, any song really but in this one in particular you know intro verse chorus and so on it, it made it easier in giving us these defined points. All right. So my last question is going to be, uh, you've teased this. Uh, it's doing its festival run right now. When are we able, if you know people are able to catch this during this festival run, when are we able to watch this? Um, I would say uh, that would be that would be a decision that Farewell Fortune would be making. But I would definitely stay tuned to Farewell Fortune, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Farewell Fortune. Um, they, their website, farewellfortune.com. Um, and I'm sure it'll be sooner than later. All right. Well, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's, uh, at Jamin Mears, uh, J A M I N M E A R S. And, um, that's probably the best place to get in touch with me. Dope. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, and make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button below so that you guys can uh, catch more independent filmmakers and all of our genre blast coverage.